Hello and welcome to the third edition of the Z Planet podcast. I'm your host Mark English and today I'm with the lovely and delightful singer, actor, presenter Linda John Pierre. Hello. Hello, Mark. How are you? All right. Yes, darling. How are you? Very well. Lovely to see you. Good. Thank you. Likewise. Um, Linda, you may know those who saw ITV's The Big Audition last year in 2018. Was yes, on that. in October. Yeah. yeah. Was, uh, very interesting. I saw some playbacks on that, actually. Very oh, good. Oh, did yeah. you? Oh, God. Made a right fool of myself. Yeah. But there you go. Um, so you've been on This Morning, haven't you, with uh, Yeah, Eamon I was and... on This Morning um, with Eamon and Ruth, talking about the show. Um, so yeah, that was all really interesting, really lovely chat with them, and they're lovely people. Um, so yeah, good fun. And we've been um, working together the last six weeks in pantomime. Yes. I haven't really, I've been backstage <laughs> around the back, but Linda's been on stage with Paul Merton and... Yeah, Paul Merton, and Pete Furman. Pete Furman, Lee Ryan. Great cast, um, doing panto, Aladdin. Um, Paul Merton's first. Yes, Paul Panto. Merton's first. Um, and it was an absolute joy to work with him. And yeah, we all had a blast. And it was not just about the cast as well, but it was everybody backstage, including yourself and the crew, um, who kind of like helped with props, scenery, etc., who have actually been the best um, team. And it's just been an absolute joy working with them. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. For me, working oh. with with Wimbledon. Yeah. How much did, how much am I paying you to? <laughs> you can pay me after. It's fine. And Linda, Linda <laughs> has been absolutely delightful during the run. So this is for those people who are working overseas. This is new, we're at new Wimbledon Theatre where the panto was. Pantomime is a traditional Christmas show that actually is, is kind of seeping over to overseas now. It is yeah. actually. It is. You know, they, I had quite a few people come up to me afterwards when I left the building at, in between shows just to go and, go and get a bit of fresh air. And some people say, oh, this is the first pantomime I've ever seen. Wow. So, and they thoroughly enjoyed it. So it's always good to have a first experience of a great panto. Because if you go and see a panto that's not so great, you're going to be left with that memory yeah. and think that pantos are like that. So for those people who came to see us for the very first time watching a panto, we left them with a very positive memory. So, yeah, it was good. Very good, wasn't it? Yes. Mm. Yeah, it was very, very enjoyable. It was a very good show. I'm not being biased. It was a very good show. I've not seen 14 pantos here. So oh, it was very good. There very, you go. One of the best, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've heard it, it's received amazing reviews, not just from press alike, but from the local borough of people who have come to see Panto on a regular basis at New Wimbledon. And they've said it was an absolutely fantastic production. That's wonderful. So it's great for the theatre because obviously mm. it's put them back on the map, as it were, to head, you know, fantastic pantos. Mm. So, and applause to kudos. Mm, absolutely. Um, kudos for, to kudos. Yeah, kudos <laughs> to kudos. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, for putting a great cast together mm. as well. So, you know, we did really well. Thank you. And, and I apologise in advance if there's any ambient noise in the background. We have got a, a, a get-in on stage at the moment and uh, we're in our lovely ambassador lounge at New Wimbledon Theatre, which is absolutely charming. Um, but perfect ambience. There's really good uh, yeah. audio in this in this place. Absolutely. So, um, so, but the reason we're here today, we're not actually going to be talking about show business. No. Because Linda and I started chatting on stage door when she came in, and we started talking about something called the law of attraction, or as I like to call it, or Bob Proctor calls it as well, the law of vibration. And it's something that Linda puts into her life on a daily basis. And I think in the last 11 or 12 years, it's become very, especially since the release of The Secret, mm-hmm. which I have criticisms on, I, I will be mm-hmm. honest, you mm-hmm. know, I think it's a little bit sugar-coated. Mm-hmm. Um, but the general underlying message, I think, is very strong. I went from complete and utter sceptic to, ah, oh, this is interesting, mm-hmm. over a space of about 10 years. Yeah, yeah, And I'm yeah. much more uh, open to it now. With yeah. Could you explain to us in, your, in how it works and what the law of attraction is to people who might not know? Well, firstly, I I will answer that question, but firstly, I'd like to try and explain how it's actually impacted on my life. And that's basically, it did actually start off with The Secret. I watched it um, back in 2007. And I was actually in a production, um, and the cast, couple of cast members said, no, have you watched The Secret? And I'm like, no. And two of them kind of like high-fived each other and went, yeah, you know, like, yeah, we've watched mm-hmm. it, so you've got to watch it. And I'm like, okay, what they're talking about. 
So I eventually managed to find it, download it, watched it, and I thought, wow, okay. So this film, which, what, lasts for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, or maybe a, about an hour? A fair and a half feature film, well, there yeah. You go. But it's little it's clips, a, it's, Yeah, there's little clips on there. And I just thought, mm, can this work? I don't know. And I'd literally just come out of a series of depression because I was actually doing a nine-to-five job for a corporate company, and I was literally signed off sick with depression because I just did not like the job. However, I had to do the job because I had to pay my bills. So I managed to get back into entertainment, managed to get a, sh- a show called The Billy Holiday Story, which went, which was a UK tour, an international tour, which went to Ireland. And as I said, two of the cast members watched The Secret, and I thought, what they're talking about? I then, man- and like I said, managed to find it, I watched it, and I thought, hmm, it's about possibly changing one's mindset to improve one's own life and self-belief. So I watched it and I thought, mm, I was a bit like yourself. I was a bit of a sceptic and I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, really? You know, they're making, these guys make it sound as if you can just change your mindset overnight. Boom. All these things are going to mm. fall into your lap. It's all going to happen tomorrow. And, you know, there you go. And no, it's not like that. Because mm. obviously it takes a period of time mm. for you to firstly accept what you've just watched um, and how you wish to take that on board in terms of how to try and improve your own life. So how I've actually done it since probably 2007 is that um, I've... um, Yeah, I have actually watched it a couple of times since then. Um, I've began to change my thought process to make it a more positive thought process. And in terms of manifestation, in terms of what I want in my life. So say, for instance, like we were saying on stage door a few times, it's about believing if you want something that you already have it. Right, that's the key, isn't it? Yeah, that you already have it and then you're enjoying it. So for instance, I know it sounds a bit (laughs) wishy-washy. Hey, boom, boom. (laughs) Character in Panto. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> sounds a bit wishy-washy but say for instance you want like £2,000 in your account believe that you have £2,000 in your account and at some point along the way you will manifest certain things to make it happen that two grand will end up in your account whether, whether you have to kind of like go out and do like a project or do an extra bit of work or something like that maybe by the end of the month two grand the figure two grand will be in your account so it's about that manifestation positively believing that you can make better of your life if you really mm. want to and this is nothing to do with religion or anything like no. that you know i'm an atheist so it's it's no it, it's, and obviously it's, because of my work in the paranormal it's, that's yeah. how it came into my consciousness yeah yeah it's nothing to do with religion i was brought up a catholic my mother my mother she may as well be a nun because she's goes to church every day still and she's 70 um she's always trying to push religion onto all her daughters which we're not interested yeah, in odd. um because obviously that's a whole other podcast that me is, and religion that, that really is but you know so i've gone the complete opposite way i'm not saying i'm an atheist but i do believe that there's a spiritual higher being out there oh absolutely so i'm I'm, um, over, I'm i'm an atheist to religion not maybe to spirituality that's yes, a whole different ball game yeah yes, absolutely. absolutely so you know so my thought process is um, no, it's, it's nothing to do with religion. If you are religious in any format, then that is a personal decision mm-hmm. for you to take that upon yourself. However, the law of attraction manifestation isn't a religion. It's literally a, a, about a thought process on how individuals can think about their lives and how they can manifest positivity in their lives mm. if they want it. I think it was Nikola Tes- Tesla, the great uh, scientist and inventor, said, you know, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, it's all about energy, vibration and frequency. Absolutely. We're all, fr- we're all vibrating. Yeah, we're all vibrating and we're all a frequency. And it's how that manifests in people's lives. Like, say, for instance, I don't drive, but I'm going to use like a parking slot. You remember you said, yes. I think you always say, oh, I really want a parking slot. I really want a parking slot. By the time you actually get to the car park, you're like, oh my God, there's a parking space. Let me just nab it quick. And it's there. So you've already put it out there into the universe. Even if you verbalize it, even if you think it, even if you write it down, you know, you've actually allowed the universe to say, right, okay, 
he or she has actually written something down. He or she has actually thought about how they'd like something or someone or whatever, you know, like the lottery or whatever, you know, in their life. You know, let me allow that to ha let the universe allow that to happen manifest it and like i said it's not going to happen overnight it could be a month from now it could be a year mm. from now it could be five years from now but at least you're manifesting different start small and then obviously it will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger with the things that you want and people say is it just wishful thinking that um if you're trying to manifest something that it's going to happen eventually so if that's something you want and it happens in 10 years time people say well you've worked towards that it's not it's not being a vibrational thing and i disagree with that okay because if, if you're putting something out there mm. whatever you send out to the universe it will answer so it you, will answer. your thoughts are your life how you think is how you absolutely your life is it will answer and it will come back to mm. you and i'll give you an example and i think i might have giving you this example when we were at st mm. stage door, when we were talking very briefly about it, is the fact that I actually worked for a cruise line doing Chicago, and I was Mama Morton in, in this show, and it was my first contract being away from home, and I did it when I was 40 years old, and it was the first time I'd actually been away from family, from friends. It was horrific for me to go mm -hmm. away and do that. Um, and when I actually went and done that... It was probably the best thing I'd ever done in my life, right. entire life. And because I was so happy, every day I'd wake up and be grateful that I've actually woken up. Ah, oh, gratitude, of course. Yes. yes. I'd be grateful that I've actually woken up. Um, I'd be grateful that I'm actually doing a show that has been condensed to 90 minutes with no interval. Mm -hmm. So they literally chopped the show in half so that people wouldn't get bored of watching. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had little to do in the show, which was amazing. I worked only three days a week on the ship doing Chicago the Musical. So what I did do was actually find other means of employment on the on the um, on the ship, and I earned more money that way. But I was so happy in what I was doing. I was like, oh my god, everyone on the ship, no word of a lie, Mark. Everyone on the ship, in, I made friends in the bars, the restaurant, the spa. They even In the spa, they even whitened my teeth for free for like nearly six months by the time I got wow. on. Yeah, because I was just so happy mm. and just so grateful to be there in that environment, which was ready, which was ready for me. Mm. I didn't realise that I wasn't ready for it. So what's meant for you isn't going to pass you by. I always say that to people. Okay. That's interesting. What's meant for you is not going to pass you by because I was so traumatised when I was at the airport leaving England. The air stewardesses were literally with me for the first three hours of the flight because I was absolutely in... I was a mess. I was crying non-stop for about three hours. That was me when I'm, I went 27, when I went to do <laughs> summer camp in America for the first yeah, time. there you go. Yeah. I was so traumatised. but And obviously I was meant to do that show abroad. So by the time I came back, I literally, um, yeah, so by the time I actually came back, um, I not only bagged three auditions, str auditions straight away, castings for stuff, but I got offered two out of three of them. One was a feature film and one was Panto. And I think because I was so grateful, it just came to me. It just came to me because I was just like so happy. I was putting out there in the universe that, you know, I want to, like when I came, come back to England, I want to do this, I want to do that. And it came to me because I was like already thinking I've already got it. And it came to me. And how do you put that into manifestation? Do you meditate or how do you put those visions in your head I, or out into the universe? Yeah, I, there's a number of ways that I actually do it. I say it out loud. I meditate, I meditate at 5.30 in the morning and I meditate before I go to bed, whilst I'm in bed. I have to do those things because it just balances out the mind. No matter what kind of day mm -hmm. I've had, whether it's a good day, indifferent day, bad day, I always meditate. And it's it, not a chore for you no, to do? No, it's not a chore at all. If I don't do it, I feel as if something's wrong throughout the day. Oh, that's an interesting point. Okay. Yeah. So because when you, they say when you do something more than 21 times, it becomes habit forming. So I feel as if I have to do it every mm. day. 
Um, That's that 17 second rule that Abraham Hicks came out with. Yeah. 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 That was quite interesting. Exactly. I don't know how they come across that, but, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. I think, like, there's a lot of gurus on Facebook and YouTube and all that doing their daily videos about law. Yeah. And I find that a little bit off putting, really. I think you're just, you know, why do you have to put a video every day? You're just repeating yourself time and time and time again. Some people. The message is nice. Yeah, it is, but it does get a little bit much. Yeah. A bit when, tedious, I think, after yeah, a while. Yeah, because then. In that case, it would be a little bit off-putting because you just sort of think, yes, it's working for you because obviously now you've actually got the subscribers, yeah. you've got the people watching, you've got a following, which is great. Mm. It's very, very positive for that individual because they're focused and they're dedicated, they're committed to doing that. Mm. I mean, I love Ralph Smart, Infinite Waters, you know. Yeah, yeah. Breathing in that good-ass prana, baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and a couple of other people. But, you know, sometimes it's just, oh, another... And sometimes 22-minute videos on the law of, you know, daily is a bit... It's it, a little bit much sometimes. It is a little bit much, but I think less is more. Mm. So even if it was like a podcast or a video, YouTube video, that was once a month for about five minutes, that's all people mm, need. Yeah. You know, they don't need to know any more than that. And if they really want to know more, then yes, they can do more research on it. They can watch The Secret. They can read the magic. They can, you know, do all different types of things. But ultimately, and at the end of the day... It's down to that individual. I know people who just talk, 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 talk about what they want to do, where they're going to go, what, who they're going to do it with, blah, 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 blah. I'm the type of person that I would be like, right, I've got a vision, I've got a goal, I have a dream, and I'm going to work hard to make certain things happen. If it's meant for me, it's not going to pass me by. Mm. And I was just saying to Michael that um, I've actually booked two TV gigs since leaving Panto only last week. Wow. Because... It's just been a week. A yeah, week. Yeah, exactly. Because I've actually put it out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I've actually put it out there as to what I want to do in the future. So I don't brag about it. I don't... This is what I can't bear when people put on social media. I know everyone's different. Not everyone's like Linda. But... We should be. <laughs> <laughs> but... People say, oh, I've got an audition tomorrow for a feature film. Oh, I've got a casting for oh, this TV commercial. I've got a few oh, friends I've like that. A, I've got an audition for a play and blah, blah, blah. Don't broadcast about what you're going to... Because if you don't get it, you're the one that's got going to have egg on your face. Mm. And people are going to say, well, what happened? Oh, you didn't get it. Never mind. Move on. Oh, never mind. Next time. Post it when you've booked it. You know? Mm. Post it when it's hap actually been... Ha when it's happened, when it's be when you've been booked, when you've filmed it, you know, and then people can see that you're actually putting into practice what you want in your life, you see, mm. and you know, it's like you doing like the podcast. We're actually doing it, and then we're gonna you're gonna have snippets of film footage or audio footage that you can mask all over social media mm. because we've done it, you know. But it's basically about what individuals want for their life. What in what they want in their lives mm. and how they want their life to move in certain directions. Because most time, most people are quite unhappy, really. You know, I'm, because of the, yeah. the pressures of social media. And yeah. I don't think it's not just a young thing. I think generally, generally, you know, I put I see older ladies and men putting yeah. stuff on social media. I think it is quite extraordinary, really. Well, I, I, the world is can be a very lonely place, mm. no matter how many people you're surrounded by, and. I see a lot of stuff on social media and what I do tend to do um, and which I won't tolerate is when I see people that I friended on say for instance Facebook or whatever um, and then they just start moaning about stuff and I think that's strike one and then I say right okay let's see how we get on with watching because I won't like it and I won't comment. I'll just like, okay, this is what this person's feeling today. Maybe they'll have a different thought process tomorrow, that tomorrow will be a better day, blah, blah, blah. Then maybe about a week or so later, they'll put something different on their back, maybe moaning about somebody or something again. And I'm like, that's strike two. And then it's, there's the third time, some people might already say, well, why did you still... Because I'm giving people the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. if I friend them, if I know them, whatever. Um, but if it's three strikes, you're out of negativity. I will not tolerate. I should try that in the future. I'll try not to put anything negative on stage. But sometimes you have a bit of a joke rant. 
Yeah, you know, but yeah, uh, everyone loves a little rant occasionally. Yeah, but you do, which is fine because obviously, if you have a, a little rant, then and you feel that people will be able to resonate mm. with that rant. Like I did, I did that. It was about car headlights at night. <laughs> how bright they are. <laughs> but but it's but yeah, people who are, who are drivers as well, they will be able to resonate with mm, that. Yeah, and like, oh my did, god, they Mark, did as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm just kind of like saying in general that if, you know because there's certain people that have that have actually friended me on social media and so far I've seen about two or three things that have been quite negative so I don't tend to allow that in on my feed or in my life because mm. I don't I don't necessarily want to read it mm. as soon as you read it it's in your head it's not necessarily yeah. in my head but I just think this person's either got a different thought process about how they are using social media and a lot of people just use it for personal stuff you know like they'll tell you everything that they're doing throughout the day i'm going to the doctors i'm going to have my tea i'm going to have my dinner i'm taking a dog for a walk you know <laughs> you know <laughs> mm. all that sort of stuff and i think god there's more to life than social media you know there really is um, and we've gone well beyond the point of show. And I'm guilty myself. I don't yeah. put everything what I'm doing. I'm no. post for a couple of days, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but social media is actually can, you know, envelope. It can really consume everyone mm. very, very, very easily. So it's just about, again, how how we use the positive vibes on social media. That's why I get a lot of likes. It depends. I don't post all the time, but sometimes how I use it is... When I have something to say. Right. And when I do have something to say, it's generally positive. Um, it might be a quote. It might be something about myself. Like recently, I've just posted video footage of me singing, um, you know, on Stars in Their Eyes mm. many years ago. And all of a sudden... Oh, lovely message. A Kelly. lot of... Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of people didn't even know that I did it. It's obviously... It was like, very good, guys. I did it. I did watch <laughs> it. I was like, wow. Is it Shaka Khan you were yeah, doing? Yeah, I was Shaka Khan. But again, it's... Social media is another platform to talk about, but you know, mm. it's how you put your own thought process on social media in life when you talk to friends, when you talk to family, even though people might have a different thought process concept about life in general, it's how you decide to live your life and how you want to portray how you want to live your life and where you want your life to go. Mm. So getting down to sort of the nitty gritty, when I see people say, you know, it's about raising your vibration to mm. what you, not what you desire, what you know is going to happen. You've got to have that sort of, it's mm -hmm. already happening. But people say, well, how do you raise your vibration? But you've answered, you've sort of helped us out a little bit there by mm. meditating mm -hmm. and feeling like you have it. Mm -hmm. Once you start feeling, your vibration is going to rise. Yeah. And you get that. You know, if you imagine eating an orange mm. and really imagine eating an imaginary orange, you're going to get that little, that little... Yeah, little either. taste. Go, yeah. Oh, I really fancy mm. an orange now. Let me go and get an orange and, and eat. And obviously, yeah, we can mm. manifest that really relatively quickly if we can afford an orange. Um, you know, and and we can actually make that happen. But it is about that manifestation, the nitty gritty of the thought process. I know I keep repeating myself um, in terms of trying to explain it, but and I want to try and sort of like give you an example. And we also, um, one thing I think we need to, quite important, before, just to interrupt you mm. slightly, the thought process of consciousness, yes. is it associated with the brain or not? Mm. Now, more and more people are thinking, we don't think it is. You know, yeah. it's something out into the universe, it's something else. Yeah. It's allowing the universe to make things happen mm. for us. Because, you know what it is? It says part in the secret, when we watch it, that it's like an imaginary shopping list. Yeah. And yeah, when you imagine, isn't it? yeah, mm. and when you imagine that you've got a shopping list of the things that you desire, not you want, that you desire in your life, you put it out there. Like, say, for instance, I would actually go, um, I I would go for a casting, and then, for instance, when I went for the, um, a casting for a feature film, and when I went for a casting for a feature film last year. I went in, I was relaxed, I had other things going on in my mind, as in, as soon as I leave here, I've got to do A, B and C. That means I've got to get back home to, to continue working throughout the day. So it's allowing, not only going for an audition or an interview or a casting or whatever, 
but it's allowing the universe to work its magic as in you go for the interview or the job that you want to that you desire yes you like the job however when you leave that premises it's easier said than done but have something else that will occupy your mind or occupy your physicality in terms of go and do something don't sit and ponder go don't i know so many actors that will just go to a coffee shop and they've told me that they do this and i'm like oh god don't even talk to me about that but they'd go to a coffee shop and ponder on their audition and casting and and think oh i could have done it this way or i could have done it that way it's too late now because right. you've done it so you're saying you do, right it's doing it's out in the universe i've done my bit onto something L else yeah. then i'm not gonna yeah i'm not gonna ponder on it because the thing is the reason why i say that is because when you actually want something so badly and we've all done it like say for instance we go for a job interview or a casting or an audition and you think oh my god i really want that job i really really want that job oh my god it means so much to me oh and then you think about it the next day you think about it the same day you think about it a day after and obviously you're holding on to that thought and you haven't released yeah. it because you also universe. you're saying you want the job not i've got that job let it go yeah you're you're if you continue thinking about it so intently then you're not allowing the universe to work its magic to make it happen so that you do get a recall so that you do get the job so because i did this particular casting for a feature film last year i had stuff to do i literally didn't have time to think about this casting i literally was so relaxed i went in there i did what i had to do made them howl with laughter um and i literally walked away and i was like oh my god i've got to get home because i've got to do this 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 and by the time i got home it was the next day they actually said yeah we'd like to book linda for the feature film and it was having lines with gerard mm. butler no oh, right in, yeah. in in the film yeah. so i was just like oh my god what film okay. was that it's called angel has fallen which should be out this year angel. which is a prequel to london has fallen oh so doing the third one yeah because there was a yeah the one when in Washington DC, yeah, right. in London. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that should should be out this year, later this year, I think. Um, so it's a, it's trying to at least allow the universe to work its magic. And like I said earlier, if it's meant for you, it won't pass you by. It will it will come to you. And but the skeptics could say, well, that thing it's just if it doesn't happen, it doesn't. Then it's just it's just guesswork. Then it's not. It could the the skeptics could say that because obviously that's. They're skeptics, mm. and obviously they they may listen to this and go, yeah, well she's just talking rubbish. However, everyone is everyone. <laughs> Sorry about the, the the banging in the background. <laughs> um, everyone's different. Everyone's got a different mm. thought process. So, you know, I respect the skeptics who will have. Their I'm not one, points, by the way. <laughs> no, no, who will have their points of points of view, their opinions, which is absolutely fine. Um, but there are other other people like us who will think, right, okay, shall I try to start thinking about things differently so that I can improve my life, even if it's in a very small way, um, to make positive things happen? Because for me, back in 2011, I finally found this in the last couple of years, this old notebook, and mm. had some affirmations in there. Yeah. And some um, things that want to happen. Oh, okay. One was is to go back to America. Oh, I haven't, right. been, I haven't been abroad for a couple of years because of... Um, yeah, couldn't afford it really. Yeah, yeah. Um, one was have some cash coming in, and I thought, okay, and that, that was 2011. And I found this book about two years ago, and literally the following year after I bought them, money came my way. Went back to America that year, and been going back ever since. There you every go. year. Yeah, yeah. See, after years of not travelling because yeah. of money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. So it, your proof that it can actually mm. happen. You know, you write it down. And writing writing it down is solidifying your order to the universe. Like at the beginning of... Actually, I haven't even opened the letter yet, but I wrote a letter to myself or to the universe. Okay. And I said, these are the things I'd like in 2018, and I need to open that letter to see what has actually come to fruition. And, yeah, that would be quite interesting. Because <laughs> I haven't opened it yet. Can you remember what you wrote, though? Um, I said I definitely said I wanted to be in a film. Mm -hmm. I definitely said I wanted to be on television. I definitely said I wanted to be a presenter. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I need to, I can't remember anything else, but yeah, it was a list of stuff, but I know that those are the main ones that I really wanted to sort of focus on. Um, I haven't, what I've actually started doing for this year is writing down, I can't remember if I told you, oh yes, I showed you, yes. the jar. Mm, this jar is really interesting, listen to this guy. Oh, I love the jar. So I basically said to myself, a friend of mine sent me a picture and she said, see if you can actually carry this through throughout 2019. And it was a jar full of post-it notes. And I thought, what's she talking about? And it's a post-it note for everything that is positive that's happened in your life. Whether it's a small thing, whether it's a, you know, a big thing, but something positive. It doesn't have to be daily, but anything positive that's actually happened. So, um, I, so far, I've actually started it last week because I bought the jar whilst we were doing Panto. Mm. And um, I've written down several things, obviously, like the booking of the two TV jobs yeah. in a week. This fantastic podcast, um, you know, that goes in. <laughs> Amazing podcast <laughs> that I've done today. Um, so I've actually started writing stuff down, not, as I said, daily, but I've written it down on a little post-it note and I put it in the jar. So at the end of 2019... I'm going to empty the jar and see what's actually, like, reflect mm. on what's actually happened throughout that's the lovely. year. That's lovely, yeah. That's a really nice way of doing it. Yeah, to think of, and just put all the positive things that have actually happened. Like I say, it doesn't have to be daily, mm. but I bought a jar from, I don't know, TK Maxx, and I thought, right, I'm going to put something positive in there. And, like, the other day I walked past a coffee shop, and it's had a banner outside, and it said, pay it forward, you know, support coffee or something. I thought, well, oh, support coffee. And then it said pay for a coffee for someone who might need it more than mm. you. And I went in and paid for a coffee. And they, what they do is they actually sort of like strike it on the board. So if anyone who's homeless, down and out or whatever, needs a hot drink, they'll just go in there and say, can I have a cup of coffee? That's please? nice. Yeah, and I'll pay for a coffee. So I, I thought that's a tiny thing mm. that I did in, way, in a way of paying it forward. So it's just sometimes it's just the little things, you know. And again, it's not always about doing things to get something mm. back. And with the pot, it's gratitude again, isn't it? It's the gratitude of being able to celebrate the good things that have actually happened. Focusing on the, on the, on the positive things, the great things, the good things, the nice things that have happened and being grateful for that and being surrounded by people who um, support your thought process. Sometimes it's not always easy. Yes, we have the sceptics in the family and friends who might say, oh, Mark, you're chatting rubbish again. Oh, here he mm. goes. But um, allow them to have their thought process. Mm. However, for myself, um, I'm, I'm very blessed and I'm very grateful again to have people. I'm surrounded by people, including family, including friends, who support my thought process because a lot of people who know me know that I don't talk. Mm. I'm actually doing the do, if you see what I mean. I literally just get on and That's do it. That's a good phrase, the doing the do. Doing the do. You know, I just, I don't talk about stuff because mm. to me it's just hot air. Anyone can mm. sit down and talk about stuff till the cows come home. Whereas I just go, do you know what? This is what I want for this year. I'm going to start making it happen. And I've even had ITV call me twice about TV projects that they'd like me to get involved in. Again, within the week. And I've said, no, I don't fancy mm. it. You know, yeah, mm. this week. This week. So there's, this is what I'm saying. Because I put out a vibration of positivity in my applications. I put out a vibration of positivity in who I speak to. I put out the positivity and gratitude of working wanting to work with some incredible people and again facing the fear like when someone's actually said to me this week oh yeah you know you'd be great hosting and co-producing your own tv talk show and i was like what and he went yeah yeah i think you'd be really good yeah. so i went oh, okay and he goes i said well what sort of show and he went Something like Loose Women, but from women of different backgrounds, different cultures to come in, maybe do two or three women with yourself and then you can talk about various subjects, you know, about Christmas, you know, different religions, mm. beliefs, Valentine's Day or, you know, whatever. Just talk about stuff that would kind of like get people's minds thinking. So it's being grateful 
for opportunities that are coming my way or anyone's way. And once you have that gratitude, then you know that more will come to you in that in whatever field you want to work in or just experience. It's frightening. Mm. Don't get me wrong. It all sounds all lovely and oh yeah it's all we're happy for linda but at the same time i'm still thinking oh my god i'm absolutely cacking it here because i've never done that before you know but it's it's the gratitude i think i feel of working with such incredible people like i'd stand behind stage whilst we were doing panto and i every single performance i would come down at the five when it's the five minute call and i'd sit on the stair well on stage and I'd just say I'm so so grateful to be here I absolutely love my job and thanking the universe for things that are going to come my way mm. so I, I would actually sit backstage and go thank you universe for working with Capital Radio <laughs> or thank you universe for working with BBC Radio 1 or, Cap or mm. BBC Extra 1 Extra thank you universe for working on This Morning with Ruth and Eamon. Thank you, Universe, for being a presenter on one of the big, like, channels. Thank you. I'm so grateful. So, so grateful. And I think once you have that gratitude, you're more than halfway there. Mm. there that's where a lot of people fall down. I think that's where sceptics come in. Because once you're truly grateful for what enters your life in a positive format, it doesn't necessarily have to be a specific thing that you are wanting something else could come your way yeah. that you were not expecting I mean uh, you said something really key there just now and I really like that it's thank you universe for something coming my way for, sorry for things coming my way yeah nothing specific but things coming my yeah. way they're, they're already happening yeah because uh, I'm allowing the universe yeah. like yesterday I'll give you a little secret I went into a casting last night I was the last person there the casting team were actually waiting for the guy to turn up to be my partner in this casting and I just thought oh my god this guy's not going to turn up and there was nobody else in your office everyone had gone and I thought well let's just see what happens but again I haven't thought about it it was just something in my head that just thought if I get it great but I was just very grateful to be sat in this particular casting team's office so grateful and they were lovely we ended up having a laugh and a chat and I'd never even been to that casting office mm. before. So I was like, I'm so grateful to actually be sat here because now they know who I am. Mm. As in, they might go, oh, she wasn't right for that job, but she might be right for this. You know, I always mm. think of it like that. You know, but it's just the gratitude. Mm. Um, That's interesting. Well, I think the gratitude is in, so we have to sort of wrap it up now. Yeah. Because I think gratitude seems to be the, the word. There's so much stuff on YouTube for you to watch. So many different people going on how to do your own manifestations, your own gratefulness. You obviously got to find your own path. There are so many different 100%. ways of doing it. You but gratitude, find... as Linda's saying, gratitude is one of the big ones. Yeah. Once you find gratitude and that positivity within yourself, then you are the only person who will know how to manifest where and what you want where you want to go in your life and what you want in your life it's down to that individual you can watch a thousand youtube videos yeah. you can watch what's a, the a secret thousand. what's what the bleep what do you, you know do? yeah don't get me started on that one but, but um <laughs> you know but yeah. ex exactly so it's down to that individual just feel that gratitude of going do you know what i'm so grateful to be here and i'm so grateful to be working in a panto that or in any job for that matter any job i've ever done Probably in the last, well, since 2007, I've truly been grateful for. And whatever happens, happens. You know, it's that thought process. Mm. Well, Linda, I'm grateful. <laughs> See what I did there? I'm very grateful for you to come down here on a Saturday morning. No, to chatting about. Very I think welcome. it's something we probably might, might do another podcast on. I think there's, there's so much more we can talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Subject. Yeah, absolutely. But it's... It's been an absolute pleasure, Mark. Oh, no, Thank you very much for inviting me down to talk about, you know, the secret manifestation, the universe, positive thinking, gratitude. Mm. You know, it's, yeah. And if anyone's got any questions about this, you know, please 
email over to the the Z Planet podcast at gmail.com. That's the Z Planet podcast at gmail.com. Um, I can always forward them on to Linda as well. If she yeah, can ask some of your questions. Yeah, um, Because it's, like, it's, a, it's a big subject. It is. It's huge. And it's, a, it's an old subject as well. It's not something that's come up in the last 10, 15 years. You know, it's I been know. going on for thousands of years. It has. It has. Especially in old religious texts and just philosophers' texts. Absolutely. Even Winston Churchill. Yeah, he, there is rumour. He, yeah, he was like that, yeah. Yeah, he believed in it. So, yeah. you know, it's it goes back centuries. So it's just literally bringing that thought process forward. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you later. Yeah. Take care now. Bye.